I think when we started to think about how we could best use Tonic and all the experience that they've got bringing their skills to the table, we wanted to look at the issue of gender from as profound a point of view as we could. So rather than um, looking at quotas or targets, all of which are, uh, are very useful, but all of which we already have, it felt like trying to address gender in the deepest way possible was, was the great opportunity. So how do we relate to each other? What deep personal patterns do each of us bring to the way that we work together? And so the most appropriate way of um, analysing that was to start with the basic way that we communicate as an organisation and that, like many organisations, is through meetings. So uh, Tonic came and observed meetings right across the organisations and also had, had many conversations with individuals about their, their feelings about our, um, our meetings culture, I think, and how they felt the organisation worked and uh, fed, fed back in, in very, very detailed form on what they'd observed. And in fact, of course, even having Lucy in meetings made us very, very aware of the subject at hand. So you start to observe yourself uh, in a way that um, you wouldn't normally do. So in a very simple sense, it, it, it was really trying to look at um, our subconscious patterns of behaviour uh, that we take for granted uh, and analysing whether they needed a bit of a bit of a once over and lo and behold they do. One of the areas that I'm very very keen on the National focusing on uh, for the next few years is diversity. Um, within the organisation, within our audience, um, you know diversity in terms of uh, gender but also sexuality or BAME or regional diversity, class, uh, deaf and disabled in all sorts of ways making sure that we reflect accurately the city and the country that we are um, charged with um, speaking to and for in the area of theatre. <clears throat> um, uh, and that's great, it's fantastic, but to walk that walk you've got to um, uh, really look at yourself first. So it's felt really, really important at this time where we're, where we're starting to um, really develop that side of our work that we're, that we're, that we're properly um, applying the same criteria uh, in a really meaningful way to, to our own working practice. I think the reason that we chose to focus on meetings is that uh, we have a lot of them. It's really the sort of the foundation of how we operate as an organisation, how we communicate with each other is through a meeting structure. There's loads of them, there's probably too many of them. Um, and uh, on the whole, they tend to follow the same sort of pattern. It's a big organisation, decisions need to be made quickly. We're doing 25 shows a year, 1,200 people in the organisation in full-time work. Um, a lot of money on the table being talked about, being spent. So uh, you automatically move into a kind of decisive, uh, supposedly dynamic um, way of operating to get decisions made and keep everybody moving. And already I'm starting to take on quite an aggressive stance because that's often how those meetings work. They're not aggressive, but they, um, the, 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 the goals that they're pursuing tend to be pretty um, focused and clear from the outset. When we're a creative organisation and uh, the best ideas don't arrive in that, uh, often don't arrive in that, in that sort of environment, uh, there has to be, you know, the, it, it's like drama, you know, you, you, if, every day on our stages a person wants something and they meet obstacles, they, they do what they can to try and achieve it, and if everybody did it in a completely different way, then that would make for very boring drama, and, and actually if meetings are pursued in those ways where the most uh, focused, aggressive, loud, um, clear-voiced, eloquent uh, people uh, drove the decisions, that would be quite dynamic, lots would get done and it would all end up being one flavour and that's not what we're supposed to be. And it's also not interesting. What's interesting in drama is the grit and what happens when when two opinions or two voices meet or somebody c comes up against someone else who turns their head uh, 
in a different way. So to really try and look at how we are preventing that kind of creativity happening on a moment-to-moment -moment basis within our own structures felt very important. It's also really, really important that you don't that you differentiate between when a meeting is simply about getting a load of information out, or when it's about uh, reaching reaching some kind of deeper understanding of the of the subject that's being discussed, because those are very, very different things. Also, another thing that came out of the work with Tonic is, is trying to appreciate that some processes, some series of decisions, are five years or ten years long. They're not, it's not something that's going to be sorted out on a Monday between nine and 10, 15. Um, so learning to differentiate which decisions or which meetings required what kind of process. Also, I mean, there's all kinds of details within it. One of the, uh, one of the ideas that came up was one of the areas of study, in a way, was to look at chairing meetings. Traditionally, the person who's the most powerful in the room chairs the meeting. Uh, so they're chairing it, they're responsible for chairing it, when they probably have the least amount of time to prepare for it. They also have to make all the decisions that come out of the subjects uh, that they're bringing up. So it may be that they've already made all those decisions. Uh, so they're assessing the questions and answering them, um, and that's the end of the meeting, uh, for which they didn't prepare properly. It, it, that's fine in some respects. But to actually look at taking the chairing responsibility out of the hands of the person who is the primary decision maker means that the chair can make sure that everyone in the room's got a proper uh, a representative voice. It also gives the decision, the primary decision maker, the opportunity to sit back and listen because they're not responsible for driving the thing forward. It's just one example. But as soon as you start looking at our structures and the way we run meetings, it becomes apparent that they're the same way that meetings were run at the National Theatre when it was formed and were probably run um, you know, in, in this culture uh, since the culture was created. I mean, I, I suppose the only other thing to add is that, is that even sitting and talking about it now mm. reminds me of some patterns that I've fallen back into mm. since we did that work. So it's an ongoing process. Um, and I think one of the main challenges for us is is to, is to make it all right for everybody to keep reminding everyone else of the fact that we have actually moved on from this. There is a more productive way of working and it's, and it's productive in every sense. It's, you know, people are happier, uh, they're more engaged, it's good for the, it's good for the economy of the, of, of the company uh, for that reason. Um, so yes, the, 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 you know, as well as deepening our relationship because we're going to go further in this process because I think there's a lot further to go. Um, we, need, we need to keep topping up and remembering what we've learned and making sure that we keep putting that into practice.